Hey guys, how the hell are you? Today we're gonna do an all new unbiased gear review on this, the Hotone Mojo Attack. But first, let's go over some specs of this amp. Yes, this is an amp that is pedal board friendly. We do have two channels on board this 75 watt beast. These two channels are based on two of Hotone's most popular mini amplifier heads that they offer. The Mojo Diamond, which is their take on the classic Fender Tweed tone, and then the Heart Attack, which is their take on a Mesa Rectifier tone. We also have a switchable reverb control and a switchable clean boost, which offers up to 12 decibels of clean boost power. Flipping this thing over to see all the different ports and jacks that we have here, we have the guitar input right here, as well as an effects loop right here with a send and return that can also function and is labeled as such as a preamp out and a power amp in. So if you wanted to use other preamp pedals and use this as a dedicated power amp, you can do so. Or if you wanted to run this preamp from this floor unit to perhaps the effects return of one of your other favorite amps instead, you can do that as well. Also, we've got the speaker output right here. That's right, this is a dedicated unit. You do not need to run this into a separate power amp. And we also have two different options here for direct recording, as well as an onboard cab sim. We've got a line output right here, and we have a balanced XLR output as well. Without any further ado, let's just get right on into the tone demo. For the purposes of this tone demo, I will be utilizing my very trusty Framus television model, which is loaded with Seymour Duncan Alnico 2 Pros, which have those warm lows and those crisp clean highs. So the first thing that I want to do for you guys is I want to show you guys how I feel this thing actually sounds the best. And that is when you're using the line out uh, up here at the top, plugging that straight in and using a cab sim on the computer in the DAW. Now it does have an onboard cab sim as well and I want to first take a moment to show you guys how that sounds. So this is with the cab sim off and the cab sim on my computer off. Already you guys are probably noticing there is actually a serious volume difference between the two channels. Let's see if turning off the onboard cab sim and turning on the cab sim on the DAW 
which is two notes torpedo wall of sound actually does any better. Not so much. There's still an extremely noticeable volume difference. So with that, let's now just get into the actual tone demo, but I just wanted to show you guys that first and foremost so that you could see. So clean channel, let's bump up the level a little bit. The onboard boost is kind of a nice feature when running through the Mojo Diamond because it does add a little bit of extra character to it. Just for gits and shiggles, the onboard reverb. <laughs> Enough dicking around with the clean channel. That was probably more than I usually do. Let's get right on into 
the brutes or as close to the brutes as this thing can do. We should also click on that onboard reverb. All right. Trouble in mids all the way up, gain all the way up, bass all the way down. guys what do you think does it pass the black metal test definitely adds a lot of extra noise on there when you've got the boost on and the gain dimed up pretty hard there let's see bring that reverb down to a manageable level <laughs> Definitely with the treble control, one of the things you'll notice is that the when you get closer to like almost dimed here, you definitely start to notice that the gain itself takes on a really different character to it. And I actually kind of like that a lot. So this is one of those amps where you have to really just kind of negotiate yourself. Like it's not going to get too bright. Crank up the treble if you want to get anything close to extreme with this. <laughs> Single 
we'll coil it up a little bit. I wanted to show you this and I wanted to stay on the single coil because I really feel like this is not at all capturing that Mesa tone that it's advertised as having. To me, I feel like this is getting way more in the ballpark of like Marshall Plexi, Marshall JCM 900 kind of tone. <laughs> One thing I also wanted to show you guys really quick, let's bring up the reverb just a little bit for this. And we've got the onboard boost engaged. Let's fuss with the tone just a little bit, pump up a little bit more of the mids, a little bit more of the bass and treble. So I'm hooking up my reaver compact, which is my seven string. And this thing is tuned to B flat standard because I wanted to show you this. So this thing definitely does a certain kind of Florida death metal tone. And that is what I am loving about this. Let's fuss with this just a little bit more. Bring down the mid, bring up the bass. Like, man, that is getting some sort of swampy, sludgy Florida death metal tone out of that. And god damn, I love that it's doing that. Because, admittedly, there's a lot of tones on here I'm not really liking. But once you find something that this thing does exceptionally well, that's all you want to play is just that.
So now I just want to take a moment to show you guys one of the shortcomings that I feel that this thing has. But we've got the volume pumped up to about 2 o'clock. And I want to show you guys that running this thing from the speaker out has a serious loss of volume compared to a sort of comparable amp. So what you're hearing right now... A very usable tone, rather articulate, sounding awesome, and it's at a good level too. This is my Marshall valve state that you're hearing. And thanks to the fact that I've got an amp switcher back here, I can just quickly go back and forth between them and show you guys the volume difference. This is the Marshall valve state. This is the ho tone. And granted, I understand that this is meant to be a 75 watt uh, amplifier unit and the valve state is 100, but this should be way the hell closer. Just for the sake of argument, let's crank the volume on the high gain channel. Let's crank the boost and put that on too. The tone is definitely suffering from that, but I'm just trying to match the volume here. Valve state again. Not even close. Now, just for the sake of checking it out, one of the things I'm going to do now is I'm going to crank up the level on the two notes torpedo captor just so that you guys can still get a good representation of what the tone is on this thing after we put the two notes load box to a point where this thing is usable. As you can hear, the low end has a much different character on this when we start to go through the speaker output. So we have to really, really dial that back to sort of tame it a little bit. But I'll be damned if now we haven't gotten to a point here where we actually have a very, very usable tone out of this. Is it the greatest tone? No, but for about a $300-ish unit that, well, $300 depending on where you buy it from. It can be anywhere from two to $300 and made in China, meant to be something like a budget alternative. All told, that's not a bad tone at all. For reference, the two notes, which uh, you guys can't really see, but is actually just right back here. The volume on the two notes is literally cranked all the way up right now. And this is the volume that we're getting.
because we had a noticeable volume difference between the two channels, let us turn on the clean channel and see if we can get some tasty blues licks. <laughs> With this too, man, we gotta bring that bass control back uh, quite a bit. One of the last things I want to do for you guys for the purposes of this video and also to demonstrate the volume drop thing because I hear what a few of you guys are saying. Well, Arnold, what if you ran it through an actual cab? What if you played it through a cab in the room and got your tone that way? Wouldn't that have some sort of effect on the volume difference? And I don't think so, but let's give this a shot anyway just to see if that makes any difference whatsoever. A few people have mentioned this to me that I should try it in the room through a cabinet and see if it can compare or compete at all with an actual amp. So remember, we've got the Marshall valve state on down there. It's just barely out of sight of the camera, but the valve state is on, the ho tone is on. Let's see about that as far as the volume difference goes. That would be the ho tone, and now that's the valve state. So overall, my final thoughts on this thing are that this is a pretty interesting piece in that it was definitely something I needed to spend a fair amount of time with to kind of wrap my head around, to kind of play with a few different options here. And this is definitely something that if you work with it, it does reward you at the end. Now, is this thing kind of a be-all, end-all, standalone unit? Absolutely not. But for those of us that are looking for maybe an interesting addition to our tonal palette, this can definitely suffice. One thing that I would also caution potential users, uh, potential buyers of this product, is that just like with any other piece of equipment, guitar-related, but probably really, really obvious with this item right here is that it is very much dependent on other equipment that you are using in conjunction with this. Running this into a cabinet gets you a much different result than running the speaker output into the two notes captor, for example, and using two notes wall of sound. Running this from one of the line outputs gets you a much different result compared to that even. In addition to that, different guitars, different pedals in front of this affect it in many, many different ways. One of the things that I was finding is that this unit right here, for example, didn't really care for a lot of high output pickups. Active pickups, it absolutely did not like at all. Uh, something like Lawler DBs, which are pretty high output and they also have a certain brightness characteristic to them. It really didn't like those either. 
But running something like the Alnico 2 Pros into here definitely gets a little bit better result. Switching over to a Strat and utilizing single coil tones gets you a much better, and in my opinion, out of everything I tried with this, the best result. As far as the overall tone goes, to compare the first channel to a Fender Tweed, I think is a little bit closer, but I know that there's gonna be hardcore purists out there that are like, dude, I've got Fender Tweeds, that sounds nothing like it, that's fine, whatever. I am not exactly an aficionado of the Fender Tweed, so I can't speak to that quite as much. What I will say is that plugging into channel one did yield some pretty interesting and usable clean tones almost no matter what you ran into it. But that high gain channel was probably a little bit more temperamental. Now, one of the other things I would also say about that high gain channel is to me, it did not sound anywhere close to a Mesa rectifier. Now, I understand that this is what this is. This is a made in China, meant to be sort of a cost-effective tonal alternative. So what can I expect, right? Well, I wanted it to have a little bit closer tone to a Mesa rectifier as advertised than this. That said though, I definitely found something interesting plugging into this. To me, this is more of kind of a budget Marshall JCM 900 4100. That to me was a way closer tonal representation. Plugging in extended range instruments into this, plugging in strats into this, definitely yielded some great power metal tones out of this, as well as that Trey Atzikthoth Morbid Angel tone that we know and love from him. Because a lot of people don't really like the 4100 head, but Trey is definitely one of those dudes that has taken that head and made it his own as far as what you can do with it, what sort of tone you can get out of it. And plugging in a seven string tuned to B flat standard got me some great results out of this in all honesty. So, I mean, yeah, could you compare it to a Mesa rectifier like advertised? No, but could you definitely compare it to that Marshall amp I mentioned earlier that has a sort of cultish following to it? Absolutely, fucking lutely you could compare it to that. I think this thing has an awesome niche place in the market, but I think because it's sort of branded as a clone of something else, a lot of people aren't exploring this for that particular niche. So definitely, if you're looking for something that can give you that fat power metal tone, classic metal tone from a Strat or from something with low output pickups, or if you are looking to get that morbid angel old school death metal tone on a budget, this might actually be a really, really good option for you. And I would actually consider giving this thing a shot. Now I know what you're thinking. This time in the video, we're not seeing what we used to see many, many moons ago before Arnold decided to go down this path of weight loss. Well, I've got good news for you guys. Today is a cheat day, so I'm able to enjoy a few things that I'm normally not allowed on my diet including a beer! Okay, from modern times, this is Critical Band, which is a hazy tropical IPA, uh, or at least so it says. Where's the ABV on this? Okay, we have a 60 for bitterness units. Alcohol is 6.7, alcohol by volume. Yes, this is an IPA. I've actually started to develop a little bit of a palette for these. Um, it's still not my favorite thing in the world. I'm still much more of an ale and stout guy, but these IPAs are finally starting to grow on me a little bit. Pours an extremely rich golden color with a white head. Very, very hazy in terms of how it looks in the glass. It's definitely not crystal clear.
I didn't even talk about the the uh, aroma because I'm just so happy that it's a cheat day and I can actually enjoy a beer. So, as far as aroma goes, not really a whole lot going on there. It definitely smells rather fresh. You definitely get a little bit of a beer sort of fizzy note in the aroma, but it is what it is. You know, it's pretty basic as far as the aroma goes. In terms of the flavor though, extremely citrusy IPA. Mm. Definitely does have that hoppy bitterness to it, but I'm getting a lot of grapefruit in that. Like a lot, a lot of grapefruit. And I kind of really, really like that. This is the kind of IPA that I can actually get into. Something that is juicier and hazier. Not necessarily something that is just hoppy and dry and bitter for the sake of it. But this is this is actually quite flavorful. I, I kind of enjoy this quite a bit. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to like this video, subscribe to this channel. There is tons more metal guitar oriented content to come. Remember to also find me all over social media. The screen name is always the same. Arnold Plays Guitar on Facebook, on Twitch.tv, on Instagram, etc. I'm always posting all sorts of different stuff there, whether it be guitar related, whether it be personal life related. And also remember, take what you do seriously, but do not take yourself too seriously.